Hi everyone! Um, it's been a long time, so I will reintroduce myself. I am Dr. Jessica, uh, Dr. Jessica Knox of the Canna MDs. Um, you've seen us every week talking about a variety of topics um, related to cannabis, and this week I am here to talk to you about cannabis and PTSD. Um, so you, like me, have probably heard more and more in the news over the past several years um, about PTSD, um, how how much of a burden it is on our veterans who are returning from combat. Um, and so I thought, why not talk a little bit more about it today and and discuss how cannabis can be useful for helping to treat PTSD. So first of all, what is PTSD? Um, PTSD stands for post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, a person can develop PTSD after experiencing or even just witnessing a life-threatening event. Um, some examples of life-threatening events could be combat, um, natural disasters, childhood abuse, um, sexual or physical assault, or really any traumatic occurrence. Um, and, and the traumatic case that causes PTSD can vary. It can be different from one person to the next. What might cause PTSD in one person would not cause it in someone else. Um, and so it's not so important what that traumatic experience is, it's actually the effects that that experience has on that patient that determines um, whether they have PTSD or not. So, um, you know, after a traumatic event, it is normal to have upsetting memories, to feel on edge, to have trouble sleeping, to feel, um, anxious after that happens. And these things could disrupt normal daily activity, um, like going to work or going to school, spending time with your family or friends. But for most people, we would expect these symptoms after a traumatic experience to resolve, to go away and get better um, just naturally over the course of a few weeks. Um, but there are some people who don't recover the way we would expect them to, and even weeks or months or years later after their traumatic experiences, they're continuing to have debilitating and disruptive symptoms. And these are the people who may end up with a diagnosis of PTSD. Um, so PTSD is typically characterized as um, a, a severe anxiety disorder, and we often like to describe it as a disorder of memories. So instead of being able to cope constructively with traumatic memories, people with PTSD continue to relive those memories um, with intense emotional and physical reactions. Um, so for people with PTSD, the traumatic memories aren't just memories. They're actually real palpable experiences that are very debilitating on a daily basis. Um, so the classic PTSD symptoms fall into three clusters, um, referring to my notes. So re-experiencing, avoidance and numbing, and hyperarousal. So re-experiencing symptoms includes things like flashbacks, nightmares, um, frightening thoughts that intrude on your normal thinking. Examples of avoidance and numbing symptoms include um, social isolation, loneliness, loss of interest or pleasure in activity that that person used to enjoy. And hyperarousal symptoms include characteristics like insomnia, um, being too aroused to sleep, um, hypervigilance hyper or always being on edge, um, agitation, irritability, angry outbursts, mistrust, or heightened reactivity to stimuli. So people might be um, jumpier or more easily startled. And PTSD can last months or even years or entire lifetimes. So this is a debilitating disorder. Um, according to the National Institutes of Mental Health, NIMH, about 7.7 .7 million adult Americans suffer from PTSD. And PTSD can also affect children. Um, they have symptoms that are slightly different from adults, but they can also be affected. Um, typically, PTSD is treated with psychotherapy and um, pharmaceuticals, um, psychotropic medications, including antidepressants, anxiolytics, or sleep aids. Um, these treatment approaches do work for some people, um, but for a lot of folks, especially folks we see, um, they get little relief um, or distressing side effects from these medications, or they might get both. They might get both not good relief and bad side effects from these medications. So those aren't good options. And those are the people who end up on our office looking for better solutions. Um, and still other people are already out there self-medicating for their PTSD and have been doing so for decades. And really for good reason. 
Um, so research has consistently demonstrated that the human endocannabinoid system plays a significant role in PTSD. People with PTSD have greater avail availability of CB1 receptors in their brain. So these um, CB1 receptors are receptors that cannabinoids from cannabis and other um, and other plants and even our endogenous uh, endocannabinoids act on. Um, so compared to people who um, have had trauma but don't have PTSD and compared to people who have not had a trauma, people who have PTSD actually have greater availability of CB1 receptors um, compared to those people. Um, so we would actually expect, because of these, these higher availability of receptors, we would expect cannabis to have an effect on PTSD. Um, as we know, cannabinoids activate that receptor um, to modulate neurotransmitter release and produce a wide range of central nervous system effects, including increased pleasure, um, alteration of memory processes. And so, right, these are, these are things that um, have a basis in PTSD. So we have a pharmacological rationale for the use of cannabinoids to manage the three core PTSD symptom, PTSD symptom clusters we just discussed, uh, the re-experiencing, the hyperarousal, and the avoidance and numbing. We know that cannabis can work to reverse those clusters. So where are we as far as evidence goes? So studies in animal models have shown that cannabinoids can prevent the effects of stress on emotional function and memory processes. Um, cannabinoids can facilitate fear extinction in animals, and they also have an anti-anxiety-like effect um, in, in many tasks. Um, also, we know that cannabinoids administered to animals shortly after exposure to a traumatic event can prevent the development of PTSD-like symptoms. We also have several studies um, in humans, including an observational study from 2009 to 2011 in New Mexico, suggesting that cannabinoid use was associated with global improvement, so that means improvement in all of the PTSD symptoms, um, as well as reduction of specific PTSD symptoms, such as insomnia and nightmares. Um, the New Mexico study found greater than 75% reduction in the PTSD symptoms in people when they were using cannabis compared to when they were not using cannabis. Um, the illustrious Raphael Machulam, um, based in Israel, who's done so many wonderful cannabis studies that have given us um, so much of the knowledge we have today. Um, so his group in 2014 looked at 10 outpatients. So outpatients are people who were just being treated for PTSD in the community, they're not hospitalized. So in 10 outpatients with chronic PTSD, on stable medication, but not getting great relief from it, um, they gave those 10 people five milligrams of oral THC twice a day on top of their regular medication. And what they found was about three of those people had some mild adverse effects, but not enough to cause them to discontinue the, the therapy. Um, but the intervention did cause a statistically significant improvement in their global symptom severity, in their sleep quality, the frequency of their nightmares, and their hyperarousal hyper symptoms. So in those 10 patients, 5 milligrams twice daily of oral THC was, was beneficial. Of course, there are still some skeptics out there. So there was um, an observational study uh, published in the Journal of Psychiatry in 2015, um, that observational study took place between 1992 and 2011. And it, uh, they were looking at veterans who were diagnosed with PTSD. And they looked at a lot, actually. They looked at 2,276, which is a lot of people. Um, but these were people who were admitted to specialized veterans affair treatment programs um, with assessments conducted at intake and four months after they were discharged from this treatment program. Um, and what this observational study found was that the patients, the VA patients with PTSD who were in this study, um, who were using cannabis, they, they found that they had worse PTSD symptoms, more violent behavior, more alcohol use. Um, so these researchers concluded that cannabis might actually worsen PTSD symptoms um, for these veterans who are already in specialized intensive treatment. I personally take this study with a grain of salt because it was based at the VA. Um, whose website still today states that the percentage of veterans of, 
uh, veterans in VA with PTSD and substance use disorder who are diagnosed with cannabis use disorder increased from 13% in 2002 to 22.2%, 22.7%, excuse me, in 2014. And as of 2014, they report there are more than 40,000 veterans with PTSD and substance use disorder seen in the VA diagnosed with cannabis use disorder. So I'm not exactly sure how the VA defines cannabis use disorder, but I'm going to guess it's very different from how I define it and how the other Canna MDs would define it. So I'm reluctant to take the VA's assessment or even this, this study that took place in the VA, their assessment too seriously, um, because I think they have a fundamental misunderstanding of what is appropriate cannabis use. So um, all that said, uh, the VA is warming up to medical cannabis, and as of 2010, they formally began to allow the use of medical marijuana by veterans treated in, in its medical facilities in states where cannabis is legal. Um, and the VA website does lament that the belief that cannabis can be useful for treating PTSD is based on anecdotal reports from individuals with PTSD. Um, they, they, you know, state there has been no randomized controlled trials. Um, I don't want to discount anecdotal reports and observational studies. Those are very valuable. These are reports of how people are, um, of how people are actually doing with cannabis. So we should not discount anecdotal reports and observational studies, but of course the VA and other doctors and lots of people are always going to want to see the randomized controlled trials. Um, fortunately, we don't have to wait too much longer for um, that coveted randomized controlled trial. So in 2014, the DEA gave formal approval to a controlled clinical trial to study the effectiveness of whole plant cannabis as a treatment for post-traumatic stress disorder in military veterans. Yay. The study is being led by California-based nonprofit Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies, and the study is ongoing. So as of right now, the study is called Marijuana for Symptoms of PTSD in U.S. Veterans, and it is a placebo-controlled, triple-blind, randomized crossover study of the safety and effectiveness of four different potencies of smoked marijuana in 76 veterans with chronic, treatment-resistant post-traumatic stress disorder. This is the first time in history that the, that the FDA, sorry, not the FDA, the DEA, the DEA has approved a clinical trial with the intent of developing smokable whole plant cannabis as a prescription, essentially, for the treatment of a disorder. Very exciting stuff. So we'll keep an eye out for the results on that. The study is ongoing. Um, so where does this leave us all now for this question of cannabis and PTSD? So we know that CBD, the cannabinoid CBD, is known for its great ability to decrease anxiety. Um, we've also seen, anecdotally and from Dr. Raphael Machulam's study, that THC can be used safely and in a way that's well tolerated um, by PTSD sufferers, and it can re uh, and it can reduce um, symptoms of hyperarousal and re-experiencing. Of course, though, we also know that THC can cause more anxiety for people when it's dosed too aggressively, when it's overdosed. Um, so that's definitely something we want to avoid in PTSD. So for novices starting from or near scratch for treating PTSD um, and PTSD symptoms, my recommendation is to start with a high CBD to THC ratio. And I'm, I'm recommending that because I don't want you to overdo it with the THC and actually cause any worse anxiety symptoms. So we're talking about starting with a high CBD to THC ratio, something that's, you know, 10 or 20 parts CBD to one part THC to start with. Um, and then over time, as you get used to that medication and see how it works for you, you can gradually increase that THC content um, as you tolerate it and also as needed for additional symptom relief. So basically, if you're starting with a 10 to 1 CBD to THC ratio, you're using the medication over the course of a week, you're not you're seeing some benefit maybe, but not all the symptom relief you would want, then it's okay to start gradually increasing the THC content. So you're gonna go from maybe 10 parts to one to maybe um, eight parts to one, um, five parts to one, and just gradually increase till you have you know a little bit more CB or THC content in there. And again, you're doing that for, for symptom relief 
Um, and also you're looking to avoid side effects. So that's sort of what you're, you're balancing your titration against. Um, and then of course you want to start with a low dose of medication. And again, over time, as you get used to that medicine, you can gradually increase the dose as needed. So if you need to, in order to get better symptom relief, um, again, while trying to minimize or not have any side effects at all. Um, so you can use a, an inhalation method or an oral tincture for quick relief as needed if you're having um, re-experiencing or hyper arousal symptoms that are causing a lot of anxiety right now, you're going to want to use a quick acting method like inhaling or a tincture. Um, and then you might also want to use a capsule or an edible for overnight relief to relieve nightmares, to help you sleep. Um, but you can also use a long acting method like a capsule or an edible for daytime, just baseline relief to, to help you get sort of just like a baseline um, comfortable level throughout the day. And then using that oral tincture or inhalation method um, if you have breakthrough anxiety throughout the day. So I guess I should probably summarize that recommendation because I was, <laughs> I was kind of all over the place. So basically start with a high CBD to THC ratio medication. You can gradually increase the THC content if you need better symptom relief, um, but you want to slowly increase that THC content um, so that you're not getting side effects. And again, start with a low dose. You can gradually increase that dose um, again to achieve symptom relief with minimal side effects. Um, and then use an oral tincture or an inhalation method for quick relief if you're having any anxiety, hyperarousal, or re-experiencing memories. Um, and then use a longer acting edible or capsule for overnight relief from, from sleep symptoms or a baseline daytime, you know, getting you in a good spot. So finally, um, we're just about done. PTSD is a qualifying condition in many, medi many medical cannabis states, which is very exciting because that means people in some states have better access to cannabis medication. Um, so according to today, I looked up on Leafly and Medical Jane to see which states um, do have PTSD as a qualifying condition. So according to Leafly and Medical Jane today, um, the states that have PTSD as a qualifying condition include Arizona, Arkansas, California, Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Illinois, Maine, Michigan, New Mexico, Nevada, North Dakota, Oregon, and Pennsylvania. I think that was 14 states if I counted correctly in my head just now. Um, but I don't know if this list is currently accurate, so please, I encourage you to look up your own state's qualifying conditions before you take my word for it. Um, because we want you to have safe um, access to your medication. So make sure you look that up for yourself. But that is what I have to tell you about cannabis and PTSD. Oh, Washington. My sister is watching and says that Washington also allows um, PTSD as a qualifying condition for medical cannabis. So yay, that's 15 states. Um, so I hope this information was helpful. Please share it to um, your loved ones, your friends, your frenemies um, who might benefit from this information about cannabis and PTSD. And look out for the next Canna MD who will be on next week. I don't know what the topic is, but I'm sure it'll be exciting and informative. Um, so thanks for your time this evening, everyone. And we'll see you soon. Bye.